Welcome to a Han Hero tier list video. In this segment, I will be ranking all of the heroes in the game whose best role is jungle into a tier list. And as we move along, I will be explaining my reasoning for why I give each hero their specific rank. So let's go ahead and get started here. I have the junglers here uh, at the top of the list and we will be starting with Tempest as our first jungle hero. So Tempest for me is going to be an S tier jungle hero. So what makes Tempest such a high hero here on the tier list? Tempest brings so much to the table to the team. He has great pushing power with his elementals. He has an amazing team fighting ultimate in his elemental void. He has single target lockdown. He has a stun that can stun several times. And he scales throughout the game with his Meteor and in combination with his Elemental Void, being able to deal lots of damage the stronger heroes get with their health pool. Uh, he is very hard to man up against in his own jungle, so if you go aggressive against him, uh, it's very hard to box him out of his own jungle. So he's good against aggression uh, once he gets his Elementals to split so he can man fight his opponents. And he farms incredibly fast. Uh, for a benchmark here, you can get level 6 around 345 or around 4 minutes uh, fairly consistently. And you can be level 10 by 8 minutes if all things go according to plan. So he farms really fast. He scales into the late game. He pushes towers. He's hard to box out of his own jungle, whereas some of the other junglers perhaps are a little easier to fight into. He just brings so much to the table. You can buy items such as Sorcery Boots and Astrolabe in almost every single game. Team fight with your team and then where you, uh, what you build into from there is always going to be up to your leisure. Whether you go for items like Portal Key or, or uh, more team fight or whatever. He's just a very, very valuable hero to have in almost any given situation. So even if he's up against counter heroes, he's still quite strong. Our next hero here is going to be Wild Soul. And for me, I'm going to place Wild Soul in the B tier. So I might rank this hero a little bit higher, perhaps, than maybe other people would think he is valued at. Um, a lot of people, I think, feel that Wild Soul is more of a passive jungle hero. He doesn't bring a whole lot to the team. But what I see is Wild Soul... When played correctly, he is a hero that farms extremely fast. He scales very well, so he can carry. And he can fight decently well once he gets level 6 and beyond, having two slows on both his main hero and his bear. So he can gank, he can push towers if you want to. You can build him in such ways. So he doesn't always have to be just purely a right-click hero. He can be a tower pusher, similar to heroes like Tempest that we mentioned so far. And he can do Kongor very early into the game. So he can do Kongor before 15 minutes, more or less by himself, which is always a great advantage of having a hero like that in your team. You can get early Kongors and start building up stat buffs. And he doesn't rank higher for me than a B because he is a little bit of a weaker jungler. You can uh, roam him with early game aggression style of heroes and kind of slow him down. But... Uh, you give him enough space and he will take out jungle stacks very quickly and he will recover. So he is quite good in that regard. And I personally think Wild Soul is a fairly strong jungler. Next on the list is going to be War Beast. I think War Beast is also a B tier jungle hero here. Uh, I'm going to rank him similar to Wild Soul. For a lot of the same reasons, uh, Warbist is more of a passive jungle hero. He does require uh, a bit of time to get going. Um, he does scale very well, obviously. He is a carry jungler. And he can be roamed very early on in the game and kind of slowed down. But once he gets his level 6 and beyond, similar to Wild Soul, he could start to make his presence felt in the game, set up ganks. Uh, he is not quite as good as Wild Soul is at doing Kongor. He can definitely help his team do Kongor, but doesn't necessarily do it by himself early on. Uh, he is great at assisting his allies with the battle cry, of course. 
scouting with Wolves. He, it, he does have a lot of valuable qualities to him when he's played optimally. Um, and if you're able to get a puzzle box or something at a very timely manner, he can start to take over games uh, if the enemy is not able to kite him very well. Uh, but there are lots of ways to counterplay against the Warbeast, being able to kite him, avoid him, um, and such uh, are good ways to deal with him. So I cannot rank him an A or an S tier hero, although he is one of my favorite heroes personally in the game. I still think he ranks at around a B, uh, at around a B tier. So next is going to be Solstice here on the list. And for me... I'm going to play Solstice in the A tier. I think this hero uh, is very, very strong uh, in the sense that not only does he farm very fast, a lot of the junglers, I'm going to keep repeating myself a bit here, but he farms really fast. So when heroes are left uncontested, they can definitely get off to good starts. But what he, Solstice offers to a team is that he's basically a carry killer. Uh, as soon as nighttime hits at six minutes, uh, you should be around level 7 or 8 if you've had a good jungle rotation. Uh, level 8, hopefully, if you've watched my guides. But as long as you're higher than level 6, uh, you're able to set up ganks fairly easily on the opposing side's carry because they are most likely going to be around level 5 or so at that time. So they are still very weak and you are very strong. And Solstice can continue up this pressure uh, for basically the remainder of the first night time, all the way up until 12 minutes, starting at 6 minutes. And he starts to take over the game because he's so overleveled and he deals so much damage. So he has this timing window in the game where he can make uh, a lot of disturbances for the enemy team. And not only that, he scales pretty well, uh, depending on what style of build you go for. Um, I think this hero just offers quite a lot. And I have to rank him a little bit higher than Wild Soul and Warbeast here in this tier list because he can get uh, a little bit more difficult to deal with early on. So next on the tier list here is going to be Draconis. And Draconis for me is an S tier jungle hero. So Draconis... He is probably one of the fastest farming junglers, if not the fastest farming jungler. Um, a lot of heroes can, can kind of be similar speed, but Draconis, he can take triple stacks as early as level 2. And he can get level 6 around 330 with a perfect jungle rotation, which is one of the fastest level 6s. Uh, and he, as I mentioned, similar to the Tempest and some of the other heroes like Wild Soul and Solstice, they can be level 10 at 8 minutes very, very easily. So Draconis, he scales very well, similar to uh, Wild Soul and Warbeast, but he does lots of AoE damage and he does physical damage primarily, which generally scales better into the game than magic damage. So he roams around the map, he farms really fast, he's very mobile, he scales very well. He has so many strengths to him. He can do Ancients. Uh, this hero is just very much a nuisance. And it's it's pretty hard to shut him down. Even if you roam him, uh, pretty much you leave him alone for just a little while. And all of a sudden he's got so many levels out of nowhere. It's like, it, it feels like you didn't even bother him sometimes. So Draconis is just really, really strong. Definitely an S tier hero for me. Next on the list here is going to be Ophelia. And Ophelia, for me, is an S-tier jungle hero. Basically, throughout, I think, Han's entire lifetime, Ophelia has been, I would say, an S-tier hero all the way from the beginning of time. Ophelia just brings so much to the table. Uh, she is primarily an early game hero. You typically don't want to take games past 30 to 40 minutes with Ophelia, but more often than not, you're not even going to need to get to that part of the game because when she's played correctly, she makes games very fast. She builds a lot of momentum by setting up kills and then turning those kills into tower pushes. And all of a sudden, after a few kills and tower pushes, your team is leading in golden experience by so much. You have so many items, and if you're teammates are good and know how to capitalize with the advantage that you have that generally transitions into you winning the mid game and closing up the game rather early 
So she brings a lot to the table with her ganks, her tower pushes. She builds auras, which are always great for the team. It's always great to have auras in your team when you're planning to fight a lot. Um, and she has a global heal with her ultimate. So always going to be a valuable asset. She has a couple of counters in the game, but they are not too many. So most of the time you can manage to have a pretty effective game with her. So for me, Ophelia is an S tier jungle hero. Next on the list is going to be something new that maybe not all of you are familiar with, but I am going to rank Chi as a jungle hero. And well, there are a couple of reasons for this. One, I don't really feel like Chi has that great of a niche in the game. I can't really label him as a support because I don't really feel like he supports very well. He doesn't have a skill set for supporting. And he's not really a good solo or mid lane hero because he just has too weak of a, of a lane presence and auto attack. So I feel like he should be labeled as a jungle hero. Uh, I do have a guide uh, with jungling for Chi and it's decently effective. So I'm going to rank Chi here as a C tier jungle hero. So he's not going to be too high on the list. Uh, many reasons for that are that he is kind of easy to roam and he's predictable in the sense that if you know he's jungling, you kind of know how he functions. It's easy to kind of follow him around and mess up what he wants to do. Now, if you leave Chi alone and just let him jungle, he jungles very fast. He jungles as fast as a Wild Soul or sometimes even a Tempest or Draconis if you can manage it correctly. But uh, for the most part, Chi is more of a mid to late game style of hero where he kind of needs to feed off the enemy team's damage dealer to become powerful himself. So even if you do well in the early game, you don't always necessarily take over games like some of these heroes in the S tier category, such as Draconis or Ophelia that can really start to snowball and take over games. T is a little bit different. He's more situational. He can be good sometimes, but more often than not, he's kind of average or, or so-so. So for those reasons, I have to give Chi a C tier uh, rank here. Next on the list is going to be Parasite. Parasite for me has always been kind of a wonky hero. I'm going to put him in the C tier category and I will explain why. I, I played a lot of Parasite over the years. Um, there, there was a period of time when I played competitive and Parasite was like first pick material. I used to play this hero so often to the point where frankly i got kind of sick of playing the hero but the hero is kind of predictable in a sense he's he's almost kind of one-dimensional he only can pr pretty much farm hard camps so in that sense he's kind of easy to mess around with a little bit you can block his camp slow him down he is a hero that rides off momentum but he is single target based in comparison to ophelia who can take over creeps and, and have lots of aoe at her control um parasite only has the one creep uh, he's typically pigeonholed into a couple of builds, which are like Codex or Puzzle Box. Um, you, you could go Auras, but it's not that that great without the Puzzle Box. And then if you go Staff, uh, you can just get Arcane Bomb by the enemy and people can buy Alchemist Bones against you. Unlike Ophelia, they can outbone one creep maybe. You still have a couple. Parasite, you get outbone, you're kind of a sitting duck. So there are lots of counter play to Parasite. And if he goes the Codex route, you can just build up Magic Armor and knock it one shot. He really has to snowball in order to be effective. Now, with that being said, there are games where Parasite is very effective. He's not, by all means, a bad hero. Similar to Chi, he can, he can be good in certain situations, and he could take over games and be very dominant. But more often than not, against, uh, I would say, an even playing field of skilled players, Parasite just kind of is a little bit lackluster for me. I don't think he offers quite enough. Uh, in comparison to the heroes in uh, S, A, and the B tiers so far. So I have to rank him as a C tier hero. Next for me is Legionnaire. And this was my favorite hero for a long time in Heroes of New Earth. So it's going to pain me a little bit to say this, but Legionnaire for me is a D tier jungle hero. And why am I ranking this hero so low, you might ask? Well... Legionnaire is just, he's just quite frankly too weak. He needs a lot of time to come online. He basically needs, I'm going to say at minimum 9 to 10 minutes before he kind of does anything. 
and that's assuming you have left him alone for that long and you have just ignored the fact that he's in the game for him to get his portal key he's really not that effective before uh he gets his portal key because you can kind of just kite him stun him when he charges at you don't stand next to him when he wants to spin it's very predictable how he plays and and there's quite frankly just a lot of counterplay in han to to legionnaire um, and similar to like a war beast or a wild or, or chi or, or what have you he's very easy to roam uh, you, you stick one support on him or one roamer and legionnaire is just really sad he's like well uh, i can try to do my stacks but i'll probably either get part of them stolen or have to keep buying regen and it'll slow me down and legionnaire is just generally sad when he gets roamed so He's just a little bit too weak. Now, when he free farms, like any of the other jungle heroes on this list, when he free farms and he's very high level and he snowballs, he's very effective. He can take over games, but I would say in a competitive game, you almost never draft Legionnaire in the jungle because it is just too weak. It'll make your laning phase way too suffer. Like I said, he needs too much time. He needs about 10, 9 to 13 minutes, somewhere in that range of time to get his core items is portal key so he can be effective in the game and by that point people are starting to build items to counter him um one storm spirit more or less makes it so that legionnaire's initiation is kind of thrown back and at high levels of play supports are generally able to get that uh obviously not by that timing in the game but later on so he starts to taper off and be less effective but uh he does have his moments where he can be quite good i just unfortunately have to rank him in the d tier so uh that's actually going to cover all of the jungle heroes or all the heroes in han that i think that their specific best role is jungle i know a lot of heroes in the game can jungle but for the most part those heroes do other roles better so even though they can jungle i can't put them on the list i will have to save them for uh different tier list uh videos coming up soon but that is going to do it here for the jungle hero tier list. Uh, I'll be interested to see what you guys think in the comments. And as always, uh, stay tuned for the next one.